So far, we have completed our introduction to Q-learning. Initially, we learned what the Q-learning algorithm is and the mathematical problem it solves. We only used two slides to introduce because the previous sections provided a solid foundation. We also introduced the important concept of on-policy and off-policy. We explained why SARSA and Monte Carlo algorithms are on-policy, while Q-learning is off-policy. Through examples, we demonstrated how Q-learning can learn optimal policies. The off-policy nature of Q-learning is extremely important. Later, we'll study deep Q-learning. Why choose Q-learning when combining neural networks with temporal difference algorithms? The off-policy characteristic of Q-learning plays a crucial role here. Now, we move to the seventh section, which summarizes all the TD algorithms we have learned so far. You will see that these algorithms are very similar. Why is that? Let's take a look. First, all the TD algorithms we introduced can be expressed using this unified equation. Here, QTSTAT is the estimated action value for the state action pair STAT. The left side of the equation is QT plus 1, which equals QT minus alpha T QTSTAT minus QT bar. The blue QT bar represents the TD target. The fundamental idea of TD learning is to make QT approach the TD target QT bar. We've already discussed why it's called the TD target. The purpose of this equation is to adjust QT to get closer to the TD target. The difference between them is called the TD error. It aims to make QT closer to QT bar and hence reduce the TD error. The differences between different TD algorithms lie in their TD targets. For example, SARSA. The TD target of SARSA is RT plus 1 plus gamma QT ST plus 1 AT plus 1. The TD target of n-step SARSA involves more decompositions, resulting in QT, ST plus N, AT plus N. Expected SARSA replaces AT plus 1 with an expectation over A in QT bar. Q learning maximizes over A in QT bar. This is the TD algorithm we just introduced. Actually, the Monte Carlo method can also be expressed using a similar equation. What is its TD target in this case? It is RT plus 1 plus gamma RT plus 2, continuing until the end. Eventually, there is no QT, and it's all immediate rewards. So, this can be seen as a special case of n-step SARSA. If you want to express the Monte Carlo method in this form, we can actually set alpha t to 1, then this term can be omitted. Then here, QT minus QT cancels out. So the final QT plus 1 is equal to QT bar. All these algorithms can be written in this unified form. Apart from this unified form, what the algorithms do mathematically can also be described in a unified way. What do they do mathematically? They are solving some equations, either the Bellman equation or the Bellman optimality equation. The TD algorithms are actually stochastic approximation algorithms for solving these equations. For example, SARSA is to solve such a Bellman equation. This Bellman equation is different from the one we initially introduced because it uses action values for representation. So, this lecture also introduced many different forms of the Bellman equation. They are all Bellman equations. You might have noticed what is inside this expectation. It actually corresponds to the TD target in the algorithm. I will not go through all of them again as we have already discussed before. One point that needs to be emphasized is that Q-learning is not solving a Bellman equation, but a Bellman optimality equation. So it directly solves for the optimal Q value. Consequently, the resulting policy is also optimal. I forgot to mention that these TD methods are about solving a Bellman equation for a given policy. But how can I search for optimal policies? It's actually by combining the policy evaluation step with the policy improvement step. This combination allows us to obtain an iterative algorithm that can search for optimal policies. The Monte Carlo method aims to solve this equation, which you could say is the Bellman equation. Essentially, it's the most basic definition of action value. With this, we have covered all the content in this lecture. Let me give a summary, which I think is quite important. I hope everyone can pay attention. In the motivating examples given in the beginning, we applied the RM algorithm we learned in the previous lecture to solve certain equations. The RM algorithm we obtained is actually very similar to the TD algorithms. In the second part, we introduced a very basic TD algorithm. Not only did we describe what the algorithm looks like and what mathematical problem it solves, but we also introduced many of its important basic properties. 
So, the most fundamental concepts and ideas about TD learning were all covered in this section. Everything that follows is based on this section, so it's very important. Then we turn to Sasa. You should know that Sasa is very similar to the TD algorithm introduced in the second part. It just replaces state value with action value. Another important thing introduced here is that it can not only do policy evaluation, but also be combined with policy improvement to search for optimal policies. On this basis, we introduce two variations of SARSA, expected SARSA, and n-step SARSA. After that, we introduced Q-learning. The difference here is that Q-learning solves a Bellman optimality equation, so it directly solves for the optimal action value. We just use two slides to introduce the Q-learning algorithm and what mathematical problem it solves. In addition to that, we introduce the concept of off-policy and on-policy. We also explain that SARSA and Monte Carlo algorithms are on-policy, while Q-learning is off-policy. In the next lecture, we will introduce deep Q-learning. When combining neural networks with TD algorithms, why do we choose Q-learning? The off-policy property of Q-learning plays an important role. I also want to emphasize that all these algorithms can be viewed from a unified perspective. Their expressions can be unified, the only difference being their TD targets. The mathematical problems they solve can also be unified. They are all stochastic approximation algorithms for solving the Bellman equation or Bellman optimality equation. Recall that the value iteration and policy iteration algorithms we introduced earlier are model-based algorithms for solving the Bellman equation and Bellman optimality equation. Now we're solving these equations without using models. That's all for this lecture. I hope everyone now has a good understanding of TD learning. In the next lecture, we will continue to discuss TD learning, but will shift from table-based to function-based forms. Then, neural networks will come into play. The classic deep Q learning algorithm will also be introduced. So that's it for this time. See you next time.